Surfing. The quintessential pastime if you are someone who likes surfing. It's a sport that, while maybe not as mainstream as something like the NFL, still has a big following behind it, as well as plenty of big names to back it up. You got the late, great Eddie Aikau, the Hawaiian lifeguard whose heroic death earned him an entire competition in his name. You also got... Okay, I don't know anything about surfing, I'm just going off an episode of Drunk History. I don't know, here are some names I fished up. However, among them all, there is one who I don't think gets quite enough recognition. A young hotshot rookie by the name of Cody Maverick. As shown in the 2007 film Surf's Up, Cody's story is one of hardship and determination, as well as one that shows the importance of taking pride in what you do, even in the face of failure. Now, Ginger Snapper, I hear you say. You're talking about this guy like he's real, but this is a talking penguin. Surely this is just a character out of an animated movie, and in any normal circumstance, I'd agree with you. Hell, even I thought that was the case before seeing this movie as a kid. The fact of the matter, though, is that Cody Maverick is indeed a real, talking, surfing penguin. For you see, Surf's Up is a documentary. I know, I was shocked to find that out too, but yeah, this is all real life we're talking about. There's a film crew, there are interviews, there's archived footage, and just look at that camera movement. That is clearly the work of someone holding it manually. What, you mean to tell me they make fake documentaries? Don't make me laugh. Okay, bad example, but I can assure you that Surf's Up is real, and I am not just playing into a joke that I plan on sticking with throughout the video. So please, allow me to take you through a truly underrated gem of a film where everything in it totally happened for real. The film starts off in the small Antarctica town of Shiverpool, where Cody Maverick lives with his mother Edna and loser cuck brother Glenn. No. Hatching these eggs is a big responsibility. Hey, Cody is voiced by everyone's favorite screamer towards giant robots, Shia LaBeouf. Now hold on, I hear you say. This movie has voice actors? Why would they need voice actors if these are real people? Yes, it is true. You got some big names attached to this film. Shia LaBeouf, Jeff Bridges, Zoe Deschanel, James Woods all provide their vocal chops here. But if that is the case, then doesn't that mean everyone here are just animated characters? Well, obviously I'm talking about an English dub here, and believe me, this is a movie that needs it. You got surfers from all over the place showing up. I mean, people like Cody are from and freaking Arctica. Are we really supposed to suspect that everyone down there knows our beautiful, gun-toting, barbecuing, Jesus-loving English? Sad to say, but not everyone in the world is that lucky. As for said voice talent, I think they picked the perfect people to dub over these guys. They do so well, in fact, they still manage to sync their lines up to everyone's mouth movements despite speaking a different language. Shia LaBeouf especially stands out because it is very jarring to see his annoying Transformers voice actually work for Cody. And I hope the camera's rolling, because you're gonna want to watch it over and over and over and over again. Kick counter, 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 kick Anyway, Cody spends most of his days in the water training to become a pro surfer. You see, Cody has a fascination with a late surfer known as Big Z, who he's aspired to be like ever since meeting him as a child. The only problem is that Cody has had nobody to teach him throughout his life, and his attempts to teach himself haven't exactly been going well. To make things worse, everyone in town just sees Cody as a loser bum wasting his time. It's also apparent in this film that Cody is way too focused on becoming the best surfer there is and is too frustrated by his own shortcomings to really enjoy himself. Just like me, redoing this voiceover for the fourth time. It's something that Cody learns not to worry about, and while well, obviously that's not really the right mindset for him to have right now, can you really blame him? Like if I grew up with everyone telling me I'm wasting my time, I'd sure like to prove them wrong. All Cody wants is a chance to get away from them all and go where he can prove himself to the world. Lucky for him, that chance comes in the form of Mikey, an overworked talent scout in search of competitors for the Big Z Memorial Surf Off. I tried looking up this competition, but I could not find anything outside this film. If I had to guess, this has to do with a discovery that happens later. You'll know in due time. Mikey, along with his boss Reggie, are two reoccurring figures throughout the film. To be honest, I don't have any particularly strong feelings towards 
towards them, other than the fact that one of them is voiced by Hades. We dance, we kiss, we schmooze, we carry on, we go home happy. What do you say? Come on. How's my hair? Is it messed up? Because I, I ain't got all day. Shut up. It's must. Is it must? But I do think I should at least mention them, considering how often they pop up. It is very obvious how polar opposite these guys are. One's a sleazy surf promoter who cannot give two shits about the talent he gets just as long as they can get butts into seats. The other is his overworked employee who, while not particularly friendly, cannot stand the fact that his boss gets a kick out of seeing penguins drown. Now all you need to know right now is that Mikey doesn't exactly like going from place to place while his boss spends time jacking around. So he's not especially keen on waiting for the shiver pool waves to pick up so as to see Cody surf. That isn't gonna stop Cody though. Without hesitation or regard for saying goodbye to his mother, Cody hitches a ride on their giant whale with the help of his new friend Chicken Joe, who I will get into later. The surfers make their way to where the competition is held, Pengu Island. So I tried looking this place up, and apparently it's an island in Taiwan. It looks nice and all, but I'm noticing a distinct lack of penguins roaming around. What happened to them since 2007? What are you hiding from us, Taiwan? As they enjoy the festivities of Pengu Bay, Cody and Chicken Joe come across the shrine of Big Z. It's here where we cut to old footage of Big Z's last surf competition against a then-new talent, Tank Evans. It was during then when he met his grisly end when a wave slammed him into an oncoming rock. Truly a loss for surfers everywhere. All except for Tank, who's seen vandalizing a public landmark. Now about Tank, I will say that, although this movie paints him in a negative light, I cannot help but enjoy how nonchalant he is about being a total asshole. A role model? No. But I do consider myself somebody that everyone should look up to. Right, no, I get you. What's winning without the loser? Feels better when there's a lot of losers around. You never want to get in there and, like, you know, help them out and show them how to surf and spend some time with the kids? No, no, I don't want to do that. Like, he doesn't even make excuses for himself. He's just a jerk that doesn't care. He's a dirty trash can full of poop. He's also kind of a weirdo. I mean, look at this scene where he's showing off his trophies. This man has some pent-up urges he really needs to work out. Tank, are you polishing your trophies again? I... I... Mom, I... I wasn't polishing, I was talking to my friends. I'm gonna be polishing later. Yeah, I bet that's not the only thing he'll be polishing. Needless to say, Cody doesn't exactly take kindly to what Z is doing, and challenges him to a surf off to defend Z's honor. The two hop in the water, Cody throws Tank the greatest insult of all time. I'm gonna jump in the water with your head. Oh, bring it on, Peckerface, let's go. Peckerface? Before facing down the biggest wave of his life. Now I'm gonna go off on a tangent for a sec. Admittedly, yes, for real life, this film does look pretty animated. I don't know what was up with their cameras, but you can see, there was a lot of fine-tuning them during pre-production. I mean, look at the footage they got here. This is basically sonar equipment they're working with. Yeah, you keep dancing, buddy. I'm sure that's gonna fix it. Now, let's just pretend for a second that this is an animated film as it appears. This is still some pretty damn good animation. The fluid character movements, their textures, the detailed environments, and by god, just look at this wave Cody and Tank are riding. If this movie was animated, I'd say the water here looks better than some water effects today. But it's not, so I guess there's no real reason for me to bring any of this up. Anyway, as you probably guessed, Cody fumbles the surf off with Tank, and he mysteriously passes out on the beach. Local lifeguard Lonnie, aka my first interspecies crush, brings Cody to an old hermit in the woods named Geek. Geek discovers a fire urchin stinger stuck in Cody's foot, and is luckily able to cure it through natural home remedies. No, 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 you... Ah! <sighs> Cody wakes up the next morning in utter defeat, too ashamed by yesterday's blunder to compete or even show his face on the beach again. I will say I don't really understand what was going through his mind to make him feel this way now. I mean, this guy grew up in a town where everyone made fun of him for being a hack surfer. What makes things so different this time? I don't know, maybe that fire urchin is still in his system. Geek, for reasons that will become much more apparent later, seems to understand what Cody's going through, and offers to raise his spirits by helping him make his own surfboard. As they're transporting a log back to Geek's shack, it slips away, dragging Geek to his gruesome death. Luckily, he's able to avoid an eviscerated skull at the last minute, and the two find themselves at a small beach with an abandoned shack on it. Upon closer inspection, Cody discovers this was Big Z's favorite surfing spot. Strangely, Geek doesn't seem to be phased by this discovery. As he goes through all that Big Z left behind, he seems to be longing, 
sentimental even. It's then when the truth suddenly dawns on Cody. You're Big Z! <laughs> I can't believe it, you're alive! You're alive! That's right, Big Z has been alive all this time and has been hiding out in the Pengu wilderness, which I guess nobody bothered walking into for the past 10 years. It's not revealed right away why Z stayed hidden all this time, but for Cody, that can wait. He realizes that if he can get Z to take him under his wing, do penguins have wings or are they flippers? He'll have a winning chance at the competition. Now despite Z being Cody's idol, it actually takes a while for the two to warm up to each other. You see, Cody doesn't exactly take Z's teachings to heart. He just wants to get good as fast as possible without actually understanding what Z is telling him. Meanwhile, Z sort of acts like Cody's fed-up babysitter. In fact, his only real incentive to teach him at first is just because Cody stole one of his boards and doesn't want him to break it. I mean, he's gotta make ends meet somehow. What better way than to sell famous surf memorabilia on Penguin eBay? He won't even go into the water to show him the ropes. After a few wipeouts, Z says that the only way Cody is gonna learn is by making his own board. And lucky for him, his offer to help him with one is still on the table. You're doing it wrong. Like before, Cody isn't exactly reluctant on taking what Z says to heart, with his first board breaking on impact. Fed up with Z's so-called help, Cody storms off into the wilderness, where he runs into Lonnie once again. We find out that not only did she know that Geek was Big Z, but that she's his niece who's been unhappily checking on his lazy ass for the past 10 years. Upon hearing that Cody was able to get Z down to the beach, she decides that, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, she should show him a good time if you know what I mean. <laughs> Gotta say, props to this camera guy for having the balls to follow them down there. I'm surprised Sony didn't get struck with a lawsuit for unsafe working conditions after this. Anyway, during a private shower scene made uncomfortable by the fact that the cameraman is still there, the two have a heart-to-heart -heart over Z, with Cody admitting he's been a jerk to him. This is definitely a small thing to point out, but I've always just loved how Lonnie reacts to him saying that. I mean, I've been a jerk to him, so I don't know what he thinks no, you about haven't. me. I have. I've been a jerk to him. I have. Well, then go not be a jerk. Like, it's just so real, you know? She isn't trying to fish an explanation out of him or have some sudden urge to defend her uncle. She knows that Cody knows he screwed up. The best thing for him to do is just go back and make amends. After Lonnie gets a nice look at those tail feathers, Cody returns to the beach and starts making his board for real, much to the pleasure of an onlooking Z. Now I should mention that while all of this has been happening, Chicken Joe's been on the hunt for Cody ever since he disappeared from Pengu Bay. It's in these scenes following Joe where you really start to appreciate him. I mean, you might have mistook this guy as a useless stoner that smokes an entire one of those bags every day. Maybe even the bag itself now that I'm looking at it. And yet he doesn't let that hazy state of mind get in the way of finding his friend. I mean, God knows what he had to endure in this jungle to see if a guy he just met is alright. Sure, he gets a little sidetracked after a run-in with the island natives, but he comes back around. Cody is still priority number one. Oh, and by the way, before you call these natives ethnic stereotypes, remember, this is a documentary. There is indeed a real indigenous tribe somewhere that acts this ridiculously. Assuming Taiwan didn't wipe them out, too. This movie isn't racist. Anyway, back at the beach, Cody finishes his board, and after doing some wax on on wax off bullshit with Z, the two finally go in the water. Over the course of a single afternoon, Cody goes from being a hack to a pro with Z's help. I'd say it's a bit unrealistic, but this is all real, so it's best just to accept it. After a day of surfing, the two, and Lonnie, sit down by the fire, singing songs, and just overall having a good time. That is until Cody asks Geek if he can go watch him surf at the competition. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is the one part of the film that actually bothers me. After Cody asks him over and over again why he won't go, Geek reveals why he's been in hiding all these years. Apparently, during his last competition, he had finally met his match when facing Tank Evans. And in being too ashamed to face his fans back on the beach, decided that the best course of action was to fake his death. You know, that's kind of a big leap between those two things, don't you think? Like really, you're going to go to that extreme. I mean, I can understand wanting to isolate yourself from everyone, but making them think you're dead? You've probably traumatized a bunch of people, dude. I'd feel a lot worse doing that instead of just confronting people who I've let down. 
Also, while it definitely wouldn't make him look much better, I could at the very least empathize with the guy if the point was to cement his legacy after looking bad. And hey, you know what? Maybe that was the case, and Z just couldn't muster the right words in the moment. I mean, hey, it definitely worked out that way. He's got a whole competition named after him. If this was the case, though, then there is still one problem. He is on camera. He knows he is on camera, and doesn't do a thing about it. Z, I don't think this film crew is gonna keep your secret for you. This is huge for them. People are going to know the truth sooner or later. You might as well just come out of hiding and go watch Cody surf. In any other movie, I'd call this bad writing, but again, this is a documentary. So yeah, there really was a guy that was this out of his mind. I guess I shouldn't be too hard on Z, I mean he does realize he was in the wrong for hiding all these years, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me that he put himself in this situation to begin with. Unsurprisingly, Cody isn't exactly happy to hear all this, and storms back to Pengu Bay without Z. It's the day of the competition and surfers are lined up for the carnage. For Cody, it seems all his training has paid off. He's come so far in the few days since he's arrived. Going from a talentless hack to being one of the final three contenders in the world's most prestigious surfing contest. Along with Tank Evans and Chicken Joe. He seems to have the competition in the bag, but Tank is playing dirty, and plans to knock Joe off his board. Cody intervenes, sending both him and Tank to the no man's land of Pengu Bay, the Boneyard. You know, now that I think about it, is it really the best idea to host a surfing competition next to a jaggedy pit of death? Tank and Cody get stranded, and while Lonnie is able to find Tank, Cody is hanging on for dear life somewhere else. Luckily for Cody, Z showed up to the competition after all, and having survived the Boneyard once is the perfect person to go in and save Cody. The water calms down, allowing the two to paddle to shore. Despite all his hard work, Cody doesn't win, and I gotta say, him and Geek react to it perfectly. Well, I lost. Yeah, me too. He lost. Big deal. He still gave it his all and is just happy to live another day, as well as see his friend safe. In fact, considering how Z finally reveals himself afterward, I'd say he should be more proud of the fact that he got a surfing legend to come out of hiding. With everyone happy to see Z alive, they all decide to put the contest behind them and enjoy themselves back at Z's beach, with Cody just happy to be a part of it. And so ends one of the greatest documentary films of all time. I'll admit, when I was younger, I didn't really like this movie. Like I said, I thought this was going to be an animated film going in, which it most definitely isn't. So to see all this text appearing on screen and people talking into the camera, it just felt so off-putting and distracting. Stuff like this is something that you learn to appreciate with age. And now that I am older, not only do I think it's great, but I must say, it's quite upsetting that it flew under so many people's radar. Not a lot of people talk about this movie, and those who do still seem to be under the impression that it's fictional. Hopefully by making this video, I can bring more attention to this film, as well as make audiences realize that these are real people's stories that shouldn't be forgotten. Please do yourself a favor and take a look at this film. Don't let the name Cody Maverick fade into obscurity. In the meantime, Taiwan's got some explaining to do. Hey everyone, sorry for the two week gap, I had some stuff going on. The script for this video took longer than expected, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get back on track uploading once a week. If you want to see more videos like these, then please subscribe, check out the channel, and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Take care.